Hello folks, Professor Fiore here, and it's time for us to talk about current boosting. So here is a little op amp. I have an LF411, nice bifed op amp. We've set this thing up for a gain of a little over 10, 10.1, and I've got a half a volt coming in here at one kilohertz. So we would expect to get about five volts out. But the wrinkle here is the load. I have a fairly low load impedance, only 50 ohms. Now, your general purpose op amp probably has an output, maximum output current of maybe 20, 30, sometimes 40 milliamps. In the case of the 411, we're looking about maybe 25 milliamps. Well, 25 milliamps maxed out going into 50 ohms is only going to get you about a volt and a quarter. So, yeah, fine. If this was 500 ohms, 5K ohms, great. But for a 50 ohm load, this really isn't going to cut it. So, you know, when do you get a 50 ohm load? Well, how about a pair of headphones, right? This would be one side of a pair of headphones, a typical pair of headphones. You know, they come in different sizes, but 50 ohms would be typical. Another place where you might need extra current is when you're gonna drive a large capacitive load. For example, a long run of coax cable. Uh, without the extra current, you're gonna run into uh, slewing problems because of all of that capacitance. Remember, you've got CDV dt is equal to the current, right? Or another way to say that is dV dt, the rate of voltage change, is equal to the current divided by the capacitance. So when you have um, you know, a given amount of capacitance, you need more current to get that same DVDT, that same rate of change, that same slew rate, right? Otherwise, you're going to end up with slewing induced distortion. So we're going to have to crank up the value of I as C gets bigger. So both of those cases, right, a low load impedance or a highly capacitive load impedance are going to demand more current. So we can prove that very quickly here just by doing a transient analysis. And boom, you see exactly what's going on, right? So here's VN. This is our half volt, our half volt peak, one kilohertz wave. We're expecting just a smidge over five. And you can see right there, there's one volt, there's one and a half. So we're getting a volt and a quarter. It's clipping. Uh, we're really unhappy. <laughs> okay, so what do we do? Well, the first thing you might think of is, well, I, you know, I could go out and buy a high current op amp. Yeah, you could. There's certainly nothing wrong with doing that. There are op amps made specifically for higher output currents and higher powers. You know, there are op amps made specifically to drive small loudspeakers, right? You could go that route. Another thing you could do would be to add a current boosting stage. So here we just have a little class B push-pull, right? A couple of diodes for the compensation. This is something we've seen before in discrete circuit electronics. So this has a voltage gain of one, right? Smidge less than one because it's a voltage, voltage follower. But essentially the betas of these transistors are gonna crank up the effect of uh, uh, load impedance here to a more reasonable value. And we should be able to get a, a decent output. So let's do an analysis on that. Okay, I can see we're just a little below five volts here, right? Um, we should be actually just a smidge over five volts. But as we've said, you know, the, uh, the follower section there, the discrete follower has a gain slightly less than one. All right, so we're getting about 4.9-ish volts off of this. Well, that's, you know, that's no big deal, right? What about the distortion? Now, the distortion of the op amp is going to be really low. But, you know, we've got that discrete stage. So what are we looking at over there? Well, we're getting about 0.33 maybe, something like that, percent THD. That's not bad. You know, it's not super, super hi-fi, but it's not bad, you know, for general purpose work. Well, is there something else that we can do? And it turns out, yeah, there is something else we can do, and it's actually really simple. And that is take this current boosting section and put it inside the feedback loop. Right, right now you got the op amp and it's just being followed by this discrete stage. So let's lift this RF connection to the very output. This way this stage is inside. All right. 
just like that. Just move the wire. Now, what should this do? Well, this should help us with both the distortion and the gain characteristic. So let's go take a look at the transient analysis here. Boom. All righty. First thing, check out this peak value. Hey, look, 5.05. .05. Now, the gain of this is 9.1K over 1K plus 1, which would be 10.1, right? Well, times 0.5, that's 5.05. .05. We're right there. So that problem is solved. The second question is, you know, did we do anything as far as the uh, distortion is concerned now that it's inside the feedback loop? Okay, and we can see that the distortion down here is now vanishingly small. It's about 0.002%, so it's a nice, a nice improvement over what we had in the other case. And, you know, we can go beyond this. Um, we can get a much larger signal than what I'm showing here. You know, we, you could throw in a one volt peak signal and still get a nice output. Look at that. Check that peak amplitude. 10.1, right on the money. Let's go check the distortion. And again, still, Really tiny, 0 0.0026, all right? Really nice. So that's a simple way to do this. Now, the obvious next question is, well, what if I need more voltage as well? Now, this would be sufficient for your average set of headphones. I mean, this is a, a pretty decent output. If you can get 10 volts peak, right, that's about 7 volts RMS, that's going to work out to a 50 ohm load. That's going to work out to about, about a watt. So, you know, that's that's pretty good just for a pair of headphones. Um, but, you know, what if you want something bigger than that? You're not going to drive headphones. You're going to drive uh, some, you know, regular loudspeakers. Or, like I said, you've got this this big uh, uh, cable that you have to run. You know, it has a lot of capacitance. And I need a very large signal, not just in terms of current, but in terms of voltage, right? Well, you know, you can only get as big as the power supply rails on the op amp with this configuration. But you could go a step beyond. Uh, you could take this and actually put in uh, a voltage gain stage preceding it. So there would be a higher voltage for the class B section. Obviously, you're going to need more robust transistors here. Um, but that's a way to do it. The whole idea is to wrap it inside the feedback loop. And interestingly enough, a number of commercial audio power amplifiers have been been designed exactly this way. In other words, they make a discrete amplifier and then wrap it inside the feedback loop of an op amp, right? The op amp is obviously running on a lower power supply rail than the main amplifier, but that helps linearize the whole system, right? Okay, it's a pretty cool idea. Again, you always have the option of just going out and buying an op amp that has high output current, but as you might guess, those are a bit more expensive. They take up less space on the board, but they are more expensive. So this is an option to consider. Alrighty, we'll see you next time. Take care.